It's interesting to be able to answer that question for the first time sitting as part of a, an international firm following our tie-up with our good friends from uh, the United States on the other side of the Atlantic. Um, and I say that um, from being able to answer the question by looking at the issues facing the United States and their markets and, and in many ways exactly the same issues facing our own markets with our own um, specifically uh, national spin on it. Um, and by that I mean what I would say for them the three T's and our equivalent. Trump, for Trump read Brexit. I think it's safe to say that uh, had we been in a position to be able to say with a degree of certainty uh, what was going to happen, how we're going to deal with the, uh, the, the exit arrangements from the EU, the market would have uh, rebounded and we'd be all sitting here uh, with a very kind of rosy picture looking at the future. Instead, what we've got is a position of degree of uncertainty and that in itself uh, creates uh, a, a situation where uh, people are sitting back, not wanting to invest, um, whereas I suppose in some respects, some people look at it and think there are opportunities in relation to that. So the first thing is Brexit. The second point I suppose we share with our comrades in arms uh, across the Atlantic uh, is the rise and rise of technology. Obviously they've got their Apples, Amazons, uh, Ebays and large corporates who inevitably are over here. But more specifically, I think what we're hearing from our clients uh, is the particular concern with their use and knowledge of, uh, of big data. Uh, what it uh, what it means, what the regulations and the regulatory environment relating to, 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 to big data uh, and how it will affect uh, their use, uh, development uh, and, and letting, I suppose, uh, of their bricks and mortar. Uh, the third, uh, I suppose, element which we share with our, uh, with our good cousins from across the Atlantic uh, is the question mark of whether we are going for a sea change in relation to bricks and mortar. And by that I mean specifically whether the traditional way in which we view bricks and mortar in our buildings and property is changing from a solid how you build it, how you let it, into how you use it. And whether the whole manifestation of bricks and mortar is turning into a, a more service type commodity. That it's not just about building it and letting it to a tenant and leaving it and collecting the rent, but actually changing it and be much more aware of our tenants' customers. That our tenants' customers are indeed the landlord's customers in their own right. And so the third and final point is whether actually bricks and mortar is now turned into a service type commodity. So in summary, it is the three T's, but with our own Anglo-Saxon spin on them. Instead of Trump, read Brexit and the political uncertainty that that leads to. Instead of technology, we're narrowing it down to big data and the use of big data and how it changes and affects people's view of how they utilize real estate. And the third and the final point which we share is the transformation, the transformation of the real estate industry and more specifically how we view bricks and mortar and the people who service them as being much more of that, a service industry in itself rather than purely developing, buying, selling and letting your building.